Hello everybody. I want to show you a quick video that shows how the CPU hit uh, is very much based on how you size your camera coming in. And so if you use your camera sized uh, to its built-in native resolution right from the get-go, uh, then you're probably going to experience CPU problems. Uh, like this, can't, this, this window that you're seeing right here is sized smaller than the native resolution, okay? And this is the size I likely will use it. But still, it's coming in as native resolution. Well, take a look at what you see as a result of that happening. Over here on the right, you'll see that the CPU is maxed out. It's been ever since I started OBS just right here. These previous ones were for me testing this to make sure it wouldn't blow up entirely, all right? The actual uh, resolution of my camera here is, there we go, let me pull this over here. The actual resolution of the camera, as you see, is a full 920 by 1080, even though it's smaller than 1080 because it's a small window. If I go ahead in here and I make this so it fills the whole screen, you'll see that uh, reset size makes it go to, to max. Okay, so there we go. So there's the, the camera is capable of this huge, huge resolution at pretty high frame rates. And yet, uh, let me quickly reset this thing. Uh, position size. Uh, oh, I'll just drag it smaller again. There we go. Okay, so as you can see over here, the CPU is maxing out. Now, me making the screen a little bit smaller helped some, but it still was really hurting, and anything else going on in processes starting up and starting out had as absolutely zero headroom, so it usually affects the recording, makes the sound start to click. A lot of different problems start taking place. Well, we can avoid that, so let's go ahead and, since I'm using this about this size around there uh, normally, right, when only webcam, uh, let's go ahead and trim this down. So I'm going to bring up the device and I'm going to hit custom resolution and bring it down to the size I actually use, which is like 1024 by 576. And now I can go in here and I'll hit uh, position size, reset size. So there we have it at the native thing. It's, it's, this is the actual size I want it at, you know, it's the maximum size. And it's already there, and I can crop it, and it would stay the same. But look at what happened to the CPU hit, just by me dropping it down from 1080p native. So here I had this shrunk, this native size resolution coming out of the camera, even though I was shrinking it down. So I was using up all these CPU resources unnecessarily, and now I even get better uh, frame rates as a result. Of course, the lighting has a lot to do with that. If you pour more, more lighting you pour on the camera and on you the better your frame rates and the less smushy you know so when you do this you you don't get as much blur you do a low light and do this and it's nothing you can't even see the fingers it's all right so let's go ahead and bring in another camera uh life cam cinema that i have sitting over here and uh this one is also right now is at full frame rate and you see what happened with the jump uh in in the cpu okay and it's so it's nearly maxed out but I really only use this at a much smaller size. So let's go ahead and take this down and click on custom resolution. And uh, I use about 800 by 448 for this. And so there we have it. It already resized and immediately I see a huge improvement on the CPU hit, okay? Now, mind you, I'm running at very fast settings. I haven't changed the Advanced tab. If you go in here and click on Advanced, you'll see Very Fast. This is the normal. Now, you can, if you're still having trouble with your CPU, you can run it as super fast, which just means that the encoder is running faster. It's not being as detailed and careful about getting super high quality. So your quality suffers a little bit, but the CPU load goes way, way down. So if just by uh, doing your camera, it doesn't help matters. Well, then you can go in here and set this to very to super fast. I wouldn't recommend ultra fast. That usually means your CPU is really not 
you know, barely capable of doing anything, but you can try it. Just your quality will suffer greatly. But super fast will let you do more. Also under the video, you notice I'm doing a 1080p video here. That doesn't have to be. Even though my screen, my monitor is 1080p, I can download, I can downgrade it down to a 720p, which is usually sufficient for just about every stream that most people can download. Remember, and also, unless you do into YouTube, if you're doing a direct stream, a lot of computers can't even stream at 1080p into their computer without it stuttering and buffering all the time. Uh, and certain internet streams just aren't capable where they're always buffering. So a 720p uh, actual output, encoded output, may be all you actually need. So you just drop it down and then, believe me, your CPU load will drop like mad because it's more than twice uh, the load on the CPU going at 1080p compared to 720, okay? I'm not going to hit apply because it actually won't affect this until I restart the stream. But uh, one other thing you can do is you can change the, uh, the, the frame rate. Let me bring this back up again. If you go under the video, you have the FPS here. You could change that to 25, and that will have a great effect on the CPU as well. Okay? Not until you restart the stream, though. So do those types of settings before you start your stream. Okay, anything in the settings window has to have the stream stopped and restarted again. And I probably have the recording stopped and restarted again too, if you have recording starting up. All right, well anyway, I hope that's helpful and that you now feel like you can get some control over the situation uh, and have some headroom so that you can run a browser and other software. Uh, now mind you, my baseline uh, was you know, with, with all these shut off was still pretty high because I'm running these cameras in, for one thing, I'm running them as global sources so that once I start the camera, it stays on. Uh, even when I turn them off in the window here, there's this, the drivers are staying loaded so that you don't have a flicker when you change scenes. That's why you use the global sources over here. Uh, so I have these three inputs as global sources. So that way they don't switch off and switch back on again. But it also means that when you're not even using them in a scene, if you've loaded them even once, they stay semi-loaded and keep making a CPU hit. So if you use the camera only once in the whole thing, it stays in there. If you're not going to be changing scenes that you need the camera in multiple scenes, then don't load the camera as a global source. Just right click, go to add, video capture device, and add add the item right from there and that way yes it will switch off when you go to a scene that doesn't use it it'll just turn that off okay and that will help your CPU to also alrighty I think that covers most of what I wanted to show you so uh, let's just bring up the camera again so I can say uh, take care sayonara and uh, and happy streaming so alright let's go